Hello, I'm Olga from Madonna. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made the wonderful Armdale dress from Style Art Pattern. This is a retro inspired fit and flare dress and it has pockets, that's very exciting, but I think you'll have to agree that this fabric is just the star of the show. It's really cute, it's called Savannah Daisy and it's from our Minerva exclusive Viscose Chili range. It makes me feel like I'm about to go on a safari. It's very cool. I love it. I'm really excited about it. As I said before, this is from our Minerva exclusive Viscose Chili collection and it is called Savannah Daisy. The print is a great take on animal prints and the colorway is really fun while not being too loud. It has the most wonderful drape and it feels so soft and light. The lightweight properties of this Viscose Chili, when coupled with a gorgeous print like this one, make it the perfect spring fabric for all of your dresses, blouses, and skirts. I used 2.2 meters of this fabric. For this, we will also be using some interfacing. I'm going to be using the Violin Vliezelin Super Light Iron-On Interfacing in white. For buttons, I'm using the Hemline Round Fish Eye Buttons in the color white. They measure 1.2 centimeters. I'm also going to be adding a Minerva Maker woven label to this garment. Last but not least, you will also need some thread. I used the Gusserman Sew All Polyester Thread in color 23. You will need two spools of thread for this project. If you are using a serger, you will also need to get coordinating thread for that, so keep that in mind. As always, all of these items are going to be linked below, so you'll have everything you need to sew along with me. And don't forget to save this video so you can sew along at your own pace. First, we're going to need to prepare all the pattern paper pieces. Stylark have a color sizing system instead of the different dotted lines of the usual big pattern companies, and I find this a lot easier to follow. Lay your fabric folded with right sides together and cut the paper pieces out of the fabric. Keep the grain lines indicated on each piece in mind. Remember to double check each pattern piece for the amounts you need to cut each of them. The other major difference that I found with Stylark is that they have uh, different seam allowances from what I'm used to working with the big uh, commercial pattern companies. So for the Armadale dress, most of our seam allowances are going to be one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. That is going to apply to pretty much every single seam, except for the internal seams of the collars and facings, which are where you join them to the dress. And those are going to be six millimeters or one quarter of an inch. Remember to also cut out the interfacing pieces and double check on each pattern piece how many interfacing pieces you need for each. Don't worry if you have to piece the interfacing to cover your fabric pieces. The pattern does recommend you do block fusing, which is where you interface enough fabric to cut all of the facings and collars from, but I personally don't like using this technique. To apply this interfacing, use your iron on low to medium heat and leave it on for about eight seconds. Then transfer the markings of the pattern onto the fabric. All the markings of this pattern are notches essentially with the exception of the buttons and buttonholes. So I went ahead and stitch marked the buttonholes and button placements to make my life a little bit easier um, down the road. So when all of the preparations are done, we can actually start sewing. Start by pinning the collar pieces with right sides together along the three outer edges, leaving the smaller rounded edge free. Stitch and trim that seam, turn the collar out to the right side and press it. The pattern then says to understitch the collar, but I really like the look of a top stitched collar, so I went ahead and top stitched it all around. Then stay stitch the remaining free edges together and set the collar to the side. With right sides together, pin the front and back shoulder seams. Stitch and finish that seam. In this video, I'm going to be using my serger to finish seams and obviously press them afterwards. That's very important. If you do not have a serger, that's totally fine. You can use either an overlock or a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Uh, you can also, you know, use seam binding or any other method that you're comfortable with or that you prefer. Next, we're going to pin the collar to the neckline and stitch that down. <laughs> Then with right sides together, we're going to pin the side seams of the bodice. Stitch 
stitch and finish the seams. Next, sew a gathering stitch in the front and back pieces between the notches marked in the pattern. When that's done, gather the large stitches into a 6 cm or 2.5 inch size. To do this, I first marked the 6 cm length using my tape measure and some washi tape. Then I tied one side of the gathering stitches and used the other side to pull until the notches matched with my markings of the tape. When I was happy with the size, I tied off the other end too. With right sides together, pin the underarm seams of the sleeves, stitch and finish that seam. Now we can set the sleeves into the bodice, making sure the notch near the underarm seam is facing the front of the bodice. You may also sew a gathering stitch into the top of the sleeve to help you ease the fullness when you're sewing. However, I like pulling all of that ease and adding pleats or tight gathers at the shoulders, which is what I ended up doing here. To make the cuffs, we turn the sleeve to the inside about 7.5 centimeters and stitch close to the raw edge. This is going to be marked on the pattern as well. Then we fold the sleeve to the outer side to form a cuff, press it, and tack at the underarm seam to hold it in place. Put the bodice to the side while we work on the skirt. I started by sewing the pockets to the side front and side back panels. I find doing this at this stage makes it easier to maneuver later, so I sew the pockets to the panels with right sides together and finish that side seam, making sure to press the seam really, really well. I also understitched the pockets as suggested in the pattern. Next, I pinned the whole skirt together. I started by pinning the side back panels to the back at the side seams. Then I pinned the side front panels to the side back panels at the sides, making sure to also pin around the pockets and the pockets together. <music> Lastly, I pinned the front panels to the side fronts I then sewed all of these seams in one go, making sure to pivot at the pocket seams and even back stitching to make sure that they were really nicely secure. I also finished all of the seams and pressed them. So with the skirt complete, we can pin it to the bodice with right sides together, making sure to match the front opening edges and the seams, as well as placing the gathered bodice sections at the skirt notches. Stitch that in place and finish the seam, pressing the allowance toward the bodice. Now we can pin the back neck facing to the front facings at the shoulder seams. Stitch and finish the seam. 
With the facings ready, pin them to the dress with right sides together, making sure you place your Minerva woven label at the neck here. Stitch that all around, starting from the center back. When we arrive at the hem, we will pivot to stitch across the hem facing. Once you've done that for both sides, finish the seam and finish the other raw edge of the facings too. We will also be understitching the facings as far as possible. When that's all done, I also tack the facings down at the shoulder seams to keep them in place. Because this skirt is flared, you'll likely need to level it. I've done this many, many times, so I can kind of eyeball it now, but you can measure down from the waistline to the bottom of the skirt all around the dress, marking the measurement you want, and then cut. Once the skirt is leveled, we can make a narrow hem. I actually did something sort of similar where I surged around the whole raw edge of the skirt and then I just folded it up once and stitched it down. is to make the buttonholes at the marked locations. I added an extra buttonhole at the waist because my experience with fit and flare dresses is that um, I need that extra button. This is optional and genuinely just something that I learned from experience to add. I then used my buttonholes as a guide to mark the placement of the buttons and used my sewing machine to attach them. So as you can see, this is a really quick project. I found that it was really easy, really fun to do. Um, everything was quite straightforward. The instructions were simple and easy to understand. Absolutely 
really recommend that you try this and please don't forget to show it share it with us we love seeing your creations and if you do want to share it create a free account on our website. It allows you to create posts, to post videos, photos. You can tag all of the materials you used from our website, which helps other people find them more easily. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.